Hey gang, Scott here. I want to talk about On One Smart Photos versus Photoshop Smart Objects. Now this topic, it's quite specific to folks that are using On One products with Lightroom. You're using an On One plugin, like On One Effects with Lightroom. If you're not doing that, now this video, this one's not for you. You know, I got plenty of others in the catalog. Go take a look at something else uh, that you've got some time for today in your in your photographic endeavors. But the reason I want to talk about smart photos versus smart objects, both of them set out to do the same thing. Give us a mechanism from Lightroom to send something to another plugin and be able to re-edit those plugin changes later. On one reintroduced this smart photo concept in the 2021.5 products. I've got separate videos that talk about how smart photos work. And smart objects is a Photoshop option that gives you the same kind of thing for plugins that speak smart objects. On one does this. You can take a photo from Lightroom pop it into Photoshop, and from Photoshop, launch it into a plugin as a smart object and maintain this re-editability. I have a separate video on that as well. So the links to the individual videos that describe the features are in the show notes. What I want to look at here is, well, what are the differences and why might you choose one over the other? And so we'll look at a few things. We'll look at the, the image quality and how do things look. We'll talk about file sizes. And then we'll also just talk about, I'll call it miscellaneous, other things to be aware of and think about. Then you can figure out which one makes the most sense for your workflow. So let's start with image quality. What I have here on the screen is a side-by-side -side comparison of a photo that I did the raw editing in Lightroom and then bounced it into On One. This first one on the left went through Photoshop and then into On One had a uh, set of adjustments applied as a smart object, uh, mainly dynamic contrast, and then did the same exact settings in On One, but here on the right hand side as a smart object workflow. And really looking at the two images, they I mean they they really are you know the, the same. I'll, I'll look at these big now. So here is the TIFF file, which is a smart object. So it went from Lightroom to Photoshop and then into On One. Let's zoom in on these little rocks here. You know, so we can see that there's been some detail added, that dynamic contrast was added. Now we'll look at the smart photo. Again, zooming in again. I've got that same level of detail, that same level of tone quality, you know, and toggling back and forth between the two, I just am not seeing any differences. And that's exactly what I would expect. Same settings in Lightroom, same settings in On One. The only difference is how did I get to On One? All right, so image quality looking really good. You know, everything looks the same, exactly what would you expect? Well, what's the next thing to look at? Well, let's look at file sizes, and this got kind of interesting. So I've popped out over here to the Finder. So uh, you know, in Windows, this would be the Explorer to take a look at the two photos side by side. So here is the Smart Photo. We can see that it's named there, and the file size is 300 some odd megabytes. Okay, so you know, it's kind of a big file. It's certainly bigger than the raw file. My raw files are around 42 megabytes each. And so we go to a Photoshop file, and yes, we're going to get bigger. But other stuff looks good, right? The dimensions, 7600 by 5100, give or take, and uh, all the other EXIF stuff and so forth. Now let's look at the smart object. Here's the smart object. Same quality of photo, same dimension, 7600, 5100, but look at that file size. Nearly a gigabyte, 980 some odd megabytes for, fundamentally, the same photo. So this is kind of decision point number one. Storage space, if it is at a premium, and you are only going to be using on one as your plugin from Lightroom. You have know, got this photo, I'm going to send it over into on one, do some additional work, bring it back. Smart photo is a very good way to go. It's much more economical with respect to storage space. So that's one thing to consider. And uh, you know, it's it, the, the image quality is the same. So right now, if all I care about is storage and I'm not doing any other uh, smart object work in Photoshop, doing a smart photo is clearly 
the way to go. I want to look at this third dimension. I'll call the miscellaneous stuff where, well, what else do I need to know about smart photos? What, uh, what might be a decision factor in my workflow? If you are a big keyword user, not even a big keyword user, if you are using keywords in Lightroom and you have a tidy keyword hierarchy, that's why I have this open here, I've got six top level buckets for my keywords and then everything else is drilled down into there. You know, I've got categories and subcategories for places, for subjects and things like that. And the reason I do that is you can see I have some keywords added here and when I add like La Jolla, which is a place I photograph often, well, that's in a hierarchy that is beneath San Diego, California, United States, North America. And then when I export a photo to share on the web, I get all of those keywords you know, uh, included in my exported photo and therefore searchable online. Now, when I run a smart photo, let's go ahead and start this up. Go here, File, Plugin Extras, on one effects, copy with Lightroom settings, smart photo. I'll start that up. Now what's going on behind the scenes is what Lightroom does for all plugin workflows. The first thing it does is exports a version of the photo, in this case a PSD file. And now part of that export is going to expand those keywords, like the one I just described, right? It's going to expand everything out and create a new PSD file. That's what the export process does. So let's go make some token changes here. And just so we know we did something, let's just add a uh, black and white filter on it. That's fine. I just want to know I did something. Send that back over into Lightroom. And I want to show you what happens to the keyword hierarchy, this, you know, uh, very carefully crafted keyword hierarchy that I have. So I've come back. We can see my smart photo is here, black and white. And notice the keywords. This was my original. And it looks very different. Now all these like these arrows and things like that. And then I look at this one here. And you see some shifts. We see La Jolla in my original actually is now still nestled under San Diego. But in my smart photo, it's just this flat list. And look at my keyword list. There are a whole ton of one-off entries. All these little check boxes next to things. Well, that is like a side effect of the export workflow. I mean, this is not an on one problem. This is the way Lightroom works. So Lightroom exported this photo. It took all the keywords that I'd added, squashed them into a single flat list, put that in the EXIF of the new exported PSD file. And then when that got rebrought into my Lightroom catalog, Lightroom goes, oh, you've got some new keywords here. Let me add them to your hierarchy. And this creates a mess, right? So, you know, for me, I don't like this. I want all my clean keywords. And so I'm left with, all right, let me go here, copy all the keywords, drop them back on here. You know, I can actually do that for you, right? I can select all my keywords, copy that, pop it onto my smart photo, paste that down. Okay, that cleaned things up. And then I'm left with a bunch of zero entries here, right? This this ocean at the top has no photos associated with it. Well, me being who I am, I'm going to want to go delete those and clean those up. So uh, the only workaround that I have for this, and it relies on me to remember to do it, is before I do that file plugin extras, I need to select all my keywords on my raw photo, copy them, and then remove them from the photo. You know, if I just keep them in the buffer or put them somewhere else, send the photo out and once the export is done and that uh, that on one plugin has opened up i can paste the keywords back in and i don't end up with this mess because the exported photo has no keywords in it it's a hack it works and i don't remember to do it all the time uh, so that's that's a little bit of a quirk now if you don't care about keywording this is not a problem for you if you do and you don't care, if you do use keyword and you don't care about the hierarchy part of it, well, this is also not a problem for you. It's only for those of us that have these curated keywords and, um, you know, I don't know, I guess I got a little OCD in me. I like to have that part organized. Uh, now, one other thing, I guess, to consider as you're thinking about what do I want to do? Do I want to do smart photos? Do I want to do smart objects through Photoshop? Maybe the power of your computer. Because when you are using Photoshop as an intermediary, well, eventually you have 
three different photo apps open. You'd have Lightroom open, you'll fire off Photoshop as a smart object, and then open up your plugin. So you've got three there. If you have a smaller stature machine, maybe that taxes a little bit, maybe not. Something to experiment with. I think the last factor to consider is do you sometimes run through multiple plugins? Like I also use Luminar as a plugin to Lightroom. Well, if I think I have a photo I'm going to use multiple plugins on, well then Photoshop Smart Objects give me the re-editability for multiple plugins. I can take a photo, open it as a smart object, send it into Photoshop, and then I can do work in on one, come back to Photoshop. Do work in Luminar, come back to Photoshop, and finally save that back into my Lightroom catalog. And in the future, I can open that up and do any type of re-editing. So uh, summed up, summed up. Image quality, it really, I don't see that as a factor between smart photo and smart object. Storage space, definitely. Smart photo has a clear advantage there. And if you're only using on one plugins or you have a photo where you're like, I know this one, I just need to move over to on one, add dynamic contrast and come back and I'm good. Smart photo is a clear winner. Keep your eye on your keywords. If you care about keywords, you may have to do some cleanup or remember that little hackery workaround it described. And then if you're using multiple plugins, well then probably smart objects may be the better choice for you. I hope this gives you like a layout and a, a set of things to think about as you're figuring out your workflow. Not everybody's workflow is going to be the same, so I don't want to be here and say this is the best way to do it because your workflow may be different than mine. It probably is, but hopefully this gives you the information that you can make the best choice for you. Got any questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.